So when we went to Galaxy's Edge last summer, we actually got the boys into Savvy's workshop to build their own lightsabers. And I wanted to make some lightsaber holders that were worthy of how awesome these lightsabers are. If you haven't seen the other video yet, you should definitely check that out. I'll have that linked above or below or wherever. But this is for the protection and defense lightsaber. So when you get a lightsaber from Savvy's Workshop, they give you a little pin. And I wanted to make the holders kind of match the pin, uh, be different from each other, and kind of match the lightsaber that they went with. This is what I came up with. There's a lot of small little cuts, a lot of sanding, some resin fill, and then some of these cool neon lights, which probably look terrible on my camera. Even some special cricket lettering that my wife helped me out with. All right, without any further ado, let's uh, see how we made this thing. I started by sketching out the design. I already knew how big the shelf was going to be because I wanted that size to match the other lightsaber display. So this was just a matter of sketching out the backer and then trying to figure out the sizes of how big this thing was going to be. Then I used a table saw to rip down some one bys into the pieces that would form the outer and inner parts of the triangle. I used scrap wood to form the shelf, and here I'm cutting out some holes that will eventually be filled with epoxy, and this is where the holocrons will rest. And then I got started on trying to form the outside triangle of the backer. This is pretty simple, I just set the miter saw at 45 degrees to cut some angles to form the outside pieces, and then the bottom piece would just be a straight slat. The middle piece was a little unique in that it needed to come to a point. And then once I had that top cut, I used it to just put in place and then measure the bottom to see where I needed to make the cut to make it fit. I glued up the outer triangle and that middle piece. And then I formed the inner layers by doing a bunch more cuts and I used spacers to make sure that the layers would be even on both sides. Pro tip, to make a bunch of tiny repetitive cuts, use your pencil to make a little mark right on your miter saw and then you just move your piece right up to that line and keep making cuts. When you're done, just erase it. Another pro tip, when you're making tiny cuts on a bandsaw, use a pencil, the eraser side, to push your pieces through. It saves your fingers. And then it was just a matter of wood gluing all these tiny little pieces in the right spots. And of course, some of the tiny little angled pieces required tiny little angled cuts. And after a bunch of trips back and forth from the bandsaw to the workbench, finally we had this piece looking good. Then sanding. I don't like sand. Then priming and more sanding. I don't like sand. And then some spray paint. Followed by a trick here that's kind of an intentional defect. I hopefully time this right. And the the paint will crackle and make it look weathered. See, with Rust-Oleum spray paint, you're supposed to do your second coat in less than an hour. And if you don't, then you're supposed to wait over 48 hours. If you don't do that, the paint will kind of crack and crumble. But in this case, I kind of want it to do that. Bit. Break apart. Make it look Star Warsy. Then I needed to make the little mini shelf, and this is the piece that the lightsaber will slide down through, and I'm also going to cut some holes in it so that it can hold some kyber crystals. <laughs> That'll do it. I don't like sand. I don't like sand. To really weather this thing up, I do a little bit of black acrylic, a little bit of water, rub it lightly onto the piece of the paintbrush, and then I just use a paper towel to wipe away any excess black, 
and just kind of rub it in to lighten things up until you get it to look the way you want. And then my helper stopped by the shop to finish things up. You can't really mess this up. You take your paper towel like this and just kind of wipe it. Wow. It's for letting you do this. It's for helping, buddy. Now when you see it on the wall and your lightsaber's there, you can say, I helped make that. That looks great. Now, Okay, this is what I do. I just swirl around. That was easy. I didn't really do that. You didn't help that much. No, I know. You did great. Next, we broke out the Cricut machine to help with some Star Wars Arabish lettering for the front of the shelf. And a thank you to my wife for making these letters fit and look so awesome. Star Wars look for this piece. Now finally onto the resin pour. I'm using tuck tape on the back of the backer piece. And that's so I can fill all the little holes with this resin that I got off Amazon. For pigment, I'm using black diamond. Pretty cool. Heat gun. Okay, so on the last lightsaber holder, it was a giant pain in the butt getting the tuck tape off of the back of each of these pieces. So somebody recommended on one of my Instagram posts, why don't you try a heat gun? So, we're gonna try a heat gun. Let's do this. It's working. It's working. Alright, not bad. I've still got a lot of the residue that's sticky left, but it was way easier getting it off. And now it's just a matter of uh, using the orbital sander to get all that off. Let's get one glimpse here. Yeah, that's cool. On to assembly, which is basically just me trying to screw all this together without destroying it. Attaching the kyber crystal shelf was a bit tricky, but I just used some boards to act as spacers so that I knew it would be level and it would be in the right spot.
fake neon lights were super awesome and super bright. Oh my god. These neon strip lights don't have any adhesive backing, so I'm using some conduit cable staples. They fit nicely right over these things and keep them in place pretty well. Yes. To keep the lightsaber blade from wobbling around a lot, I'm using a 3D printed clip that I found on Thingiverse, and then I just use a command strip that I cut down to fit the back of that clip so I can stick it to the wall. And then it was finally time to deck this thing out. That about wraps this one up. Again, if you haven't seen the other lightsaber holder video, please go ahead and check that out. And if you're not already following along with the channel, give us a subscribe. Both these projects were really a ton of fun. Uh, I'd never done resin projects before in my life. Definitely pretty happy with both of them. A lot more resin in my future, I think. And these neon lights, pretty amazing. I don't know how they look on camera, but man, they're really cool in person. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.